Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make paper colour lilies from book pages. For this project you're going to need book pages. Make sure that the text covers at least one whole side of the paper. You don't want any big gaps in the text. Using book pages that have text on one side and a blank on the other can create an interesting effect if that's the look you're going for, but I'm going to use book pages that have text covering both sides. The block of text on my book pages measures 18 centimeters by 11 centimeters, which is seven inches by just over four inches. I just wanted to give the dimensions of the paper I'm using for reference. So then you can see what size lily this size of paper will create. Obviously the smaller the book you use, the smaller the lily will be. You'll also need a pencil, a pair of scissors, some wire. In this case I'm using armature wire which is just aluminium wire that has a 1.6 millimeter diameter. The good thing about aluminium wire is that it's easy to shape. You can even curve it with your hands. And because you're working with wire, you'll also need some wire cutters. And I'm also going to be using some pliers for shaping the wire. You'll also need some PVA glue. I'm going to be using Aileen's tacky glue, but any PVA glue would work fine. And you'll also need a cheap paintbrush to apply the glue with. I'm going to be using book pages for every section of this flower, including the central spike section and to wrap around the stem. However, this is completely up to you. You can use various types of paper for any section of this flower. For instance, you could wrap the stem with crepe paper, tissue paper, floral tape. You could paint it. You could even make the central spike section from clay. You could make the main flower section from sheet music or other patterned paper. It's entirely up to you. However, I'm just going to make my entire flower from book pages and a bit of wire. So the first step is to cut the white border off one of the book pages. And then we're going to cut out the main paper petal shape of the lily. On this book page, I've drawn out the shape that you want to cut out. This is just as a guide to show you what you're after. The shape is like a bulbous raindrop shape with a point at the top. You will want to try and use the whole of the text block for this shape and also make sure that the words are the right way up. So the point of the shape should be at the top of the page. I'm then going to cut this shape out by eye from the other book page. This is because I don't want pencil marks on my final flower, so I don't want to be drawing out the shape onto the book page I'm using. At the top, I fold the page in half and pinch slightly to mark the center, and that helps me with the symmetry. If you're finding it difficult to cut the shape out by eye, then just draw out the shape on a scrap piece of paper, cut it out and use this as a template to cut the shape out from the book page. Once you've cut out that shape and you're happy with it, you can just tidy up the edges a bit, making sure there are no sharp bits and it's all nice and rounded. As you can see, mine's not exactly symmetrical, but that doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. And just go on to the next stage. The next stage is the shaping stage and I personally would recommend that you watch it in full on this video before attempting it yourself because it's a lot easier once you know what kind of shape you're aiming for. So to continue you simply find the center of the base of this shape then pinch it between your finger and thumb. Now we're going to fold the lip of the lily all the way around the shape. So to do this you keep the base pinched between your finger and thumb and slowly make your way around pinching this lip onto the edge. 
So you start by folding a narrow lip and you continue around the edge so that the lip expands to maybe a one centimeter at most width. And you continue all up one side like I'm showing until you get to the top and then you continue across the shape ignoring the pointy bit at the top. And then you do exactly the same all of the way down the other side. As you can see, the beginning of the lip on either side is quite narrow and then it gets wider as you go up the edge to a maximum of about one centimeter width. This can be quite a fiddly job. If you have a bone folder, you can always score this fold line before you start folding it just to make your life a little bit easier. So once you've folded that lip, you go to the top where the point meets the fold and you make a sort of triangle fold. Basically you just want to reinforce the fold lines that go across the shape. Once you've done this, try and smooth out the crease in the pointed section a little bit. You will then want to get your pencil and wrap the pointed section of this shape around your pencil to give it a nice curl. You can see that the point starts bending downwards as you move those edges together and this is the effect you want. We're almost there with the shaping now but the next step is to overlap the front of the shape. To do this I just sort of roll the right hand side inwards and then bring the left hand side over the top just to give it that overlapped effect that you find on Calla Lilies. Once you're happy with the fold lines and how this is all looking, you can then glue this overlap section in place. So now you've finished the main lily shape, it's time to move on to the central spike section. To do this, take another book page and cut the white border off. Then cut the text block in half. You then need to cut one of these rectangles into a square shape. To do this, fold one diagonally, try not to make an actual fold down the diagonal and instead use this technique just to see where you need to cut to make the paper into a square. So you make the diagonal fold but try not to actually make the fold and then cut off the excess paper which is the paper that's not covered by the triangle shape you've just folded over. And then that gives you a square shape. So now you smooth and straighten that square shape out again. And then starting from one of the corners, you roll the paper up from one corner to the other to make a narrow cylinder. I want text showing on the outside of my central spike, so I've put the blank side on the inside. However, if you wanted the blank side on the outside, obviously you would roll the paper up the other way. I've also seen people make the central spikes from yellow polymer clay and give it like a stippled effect. And you can also make it from colored crepe paper or any other type of paper really. Once you're happy with the cylinder shape, Glue it in place with your PVA glue. Now the next step is to cut the cylinder to size so that it's in proportion to the lily shape. It would be a good idea to look up a picture of a Keller lily online just to see what kind of proportion you're aiming for. So you just test the cylinder inside the shape you've already made and then cut it to size. I'm going to be using the pointed uncut end of the cylinder for the top of the central spike. So I'm just going to keep cutting the same end until I'm happy with the size. Then just put that and the lily shape to one side. Now we're going to make the wire stem section. The first step is to decide what length of wire you want to use and for this you're going to need to decide how long you want the stem to be. This is completely a personal decision 
and also try and make it in proportion with the lily shape. I cut my length of wire between 30 and 35 centimeters long, which is between 12 and 14 inches long. It's better to use a bit more than you need because you can always cut it down to size later. You then need to use your round nose pliers to make a loop in the end of the wire. This loop needs to sit snugly inside the cylinder shape. As you can see, my loop here does fit snugly inside the cylinder, but if yours doesn't, just make the loop a bit bigger or a bit smaller so that it does. Once you've done that, add a nice amount of glue to the loop and the wire just below it, and glue the loop inside the cylinder. The wire stem can't go through the lily shape at the moment, so just cut a little notch a very small hole in the bottom of that lily shape. Then feed the wire stem through. Once the cylinder shape is sat nicely within that lily shape, add a little bit of glue between the lily shape and the wire, just to make sure that the lily shape doesn't slide down the wire stem. Then leave it to dry. The next and last step is to cover the wire stem. I'm going to do this using strips of book pages and also some PVA glue. You can also use the paper mache technique to adhere any paper to the paper stem in strips. Paper mache solution is just diluted PVA glue, normally two parts glue to one part water. And then you just dip the strips into this solution and wrap it around the stem and then leave to dry. The way I'm doing it is just using straight PVA glue and gluing the strips around the stem in a kind of spiral. I then add glue on top of the paper as well to add a protective layer. It can get a little bit fiddly and if you're doing the paper mache solution it can get a bit messy too. Again, you could do this step with different types of paper. And if you want a quicker way of doing it, then floral tape is a great product to do that because you simply get the tape and wrap it all the way around the wire stem and it's really quick and easy to do. If you're making more than one calla lily, it's best to do each stage all at the same time. So for instance, you'd make all of the lily shapes and then all of the central spikes and then cover all of the stems at the same time. This will save you a lot of time overall. So once you've finished the stem, you can cut the wire down to size if you wish. But other than that, you just leave it to dry and your lily is finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and also I hope you really enjoyed making the flowers. I also have a paper rose tutorial on my channel and will shortly be adding a paper daisy tutorial too. So please feel free to check those out. Thanks very much for watching.